Greetings, brothers and sisters. It's Professor Spira coming at you from an undisclosed location where the sun is shining and is warm enough for me to sunbathe. It's private enough for me to nude sunbathe. And I needed this. Uh, I needed this little break uh, because, you know, you haven't seen a whole lot of stuff. I've, I've been trying to get back into the video mode and just kind of just just wasn't there you know the inspiration has to be there the vibration has to be right you know I can't just like make videos to make them you know and I tend to put a lot of focus and time in when I'm motivated and I make a bunch of stuff and then you know I don't necessarily do a lot you know or my interests go in other directions and uh, but I you know, I'm starting to get that vibe like, yeah, I want to, well, for, that's one of the reasons why I came out here. I was like, man, I need, I need a shift, even if it's for a short period of time. Because as most of you know, I live in a place where it's not this nice. <laughs> so, it's, uh, I just needed a minute <clears throat> to get away. And, you know, I'm, as a lot, a lot of people know, I'm, I'm a, I'm a loner, you know, by the real, a lot of people say that, they're like, yeah, I'm a loner, but you know, you know, you probably not a real, you know, go out in the middle of some woods for a couple of weeks, totally by yourself type of, type of loner, you know, that's, that's where I'm at, and, uh, and I, I, I love that, you know, I just love, I love the solitude and the clarity of thought, you know, I can't have that that level of clarity sometimes when I'm dealing with a lot of people or talking and even on a social level just when you're talking to folks a lot of times and there's the influences of things that they want and in your head you might have what you want you know as there just becomes this friction for most people that's just called life <laughs> and that's just called just having relationships and socializing and all that stuff that's considered to be very normal for humans to do and we're wired that way you know so I I don't discount that but I find that for me you know, I wouldn't be able to have done different things that I've done and accomplished the number of things that I've accomplished without having the ability to really be comfortable by myself going off on my own having that time to just you know I, I don't get bored I don't get lonely I don't get and there's reasons for that as far as you know the way I grew up I kind of had to develop I had to conquer loneliness that was kind of a thing where uh, I mean I'm more likely to feel lonely in a room f full of people than by myself out in the middle of some undisclosed woods so and, and I always advocate that people get into learn how to sit with yourself you know the solitude I mean there's a lot of traditions that teach that to teach how to the importance of you know, personal meditation and that kind of thing certain levels of renunciation I don't really hear a lot of people talking about that as much these days I would say about 10 years ago maybe 15 years ago the uh, the renunciation there was a little bit more talk in that w line but as I observe very few people really walk that path you know the path of of the uh, uh, as my <laughs> uh, dissertation uh, graduate uh, doctoral graduate advisor says the m monastic lifestyle you know like monasteries and uh, you know kind of a religious context but he said you know being a scholar is a monastic lifestyle because if you're a hardcore scholar you're studying reading researching most of your day you know you're not communicating with other human beings you're reading and studying going through old you know traveling to old libraries and all kinds of stuff and then and writing you know and that takes up say if you you know if you sleep for six hours or whatever it is you you sleep 
the rest of that time you're pretty much researching writing and you know you're you know you, yeah you know and that's just a general you know the same thing with different types of artists and different types of musicians there's a certain level of being alone some stuff you have to learn with other people and you can only do with with other folks but sometimes you have to be able to really spend a lot of time by yourself just practicing and shedding and that's another thing that I'm doing out here a little bit is you know I got my music going on I got my little <laughs> got my mini trampoline happening got a little fire pit here uh, you know I just you know I grew up doing a lot of camping and over the years you know I kind of got away from from it and I never got away from just going out in woods and spending a lot of time and walking around and being with myself and my thoughts and connecting to nature you know the way I feel with the with the sun like right now like uh, it's, it's like hey friend good old good old son you know that <clears throat> I will say that this year has been really this has been the hardest year for me to handle going into winter you know the the transition leaving behind warm weather going into you know sub freezing temperatures already in you know, only in november um this is this has been tough and i predicted it last year you know last year i said that this would be last year was going to be the la the final year that i don't travel anywhere at for any length of time it might not be for a real long period of time but i'm going to get at some point during the winter time i'm going to go somewhere warm where i can get some sun and my experience with the sun now it's like I mean, it, it, it feels like an addiction, but it's something that I'm supposed to have. The way that, like, if you gave me, what, just make up whatever mucus or some kind of food that would ever be my worst craving, that would be the worst food that I would still eat. If you said, okay, you, you can have this mucus, you know, if you still, if you crave this, you can have this or you can spend the day in the sun. That's not even a question. I be on that sun. I'm it I mean the addiction is to the level where I I'll drive, you know, 20 something hours to be in the sun just for a couple days. <laughs> so yeah, it's, you know, it's it, it's it's a deep piece, you know, we this is something that uh you know, a, a big point that, that Randy, you know, Randy Dickerson, shout out to Randy, uh, that he, he brings up, you know, talking about the importance of environment and uh, especially pollu the pollution issues and sun and, and all that kind of stuff and how hard it is to practice and to various levels, depending on where you're located and what's going on. And I never disagreed with that. My main point was that I'm not going to use that. And, you know, like Brother Air and other people I know never use that as an excuse for practicing the mucus's diet and doing so at a high level. But I've always said, too, that you should be strategizing, thinking forward, thinking into the future and saying, OK, what do I need to do in my life to, to transition in uh, toward being able to relocate to some place, you know, migrate, the migration process. That's something that our ancestors, no matter all of our ancestors, I don't care what your history of your stomach is. Now, notice I said the his, history of your stomach. I'm going to start saying that instead of genetics and talking about bloodline that we, we need to start saying the history of your stomach you know thus speak at the stomach understanding the history of your stomach that's what that's what 
your history is, not your race, that this made up concept of race and all, you know, we deal with those things on a social, local, political, historical kind of kind of level. But the real piece that predates concepts of race and predates all this stuff is the history of your stomach. That tells the story. What were you eating? Go all the way back. Your stomach, your parents' stomach, your grandparents, go back a thousand, ten thousand generations. What does that story tell you? And <clears throat> I mean, you go back far enough, the story tells you that we're a tropical species. If you can't be comfortable, I mean, this has been the first time in a long time where I've just been able to spend long periods of time outdoors naked and because of society and various social taboos and all that kind of stuff it's not acceptable but also it's a safety concern when you live in places where it's freezing and if you're <laughs> you know if you're if you're not a, a Wim Hof initiate then you can jump into you know uh, jump into to ice cold <laughs> lakes and stuff you know if that's not your vibe then you're gonna need to put on fake skin because that's essentially what it is we should be places where it is totally comfortable to be naked all all day and all night we should be we shouldn't be you know i mean we were we emerged from that environment there's almost nothing more unnatural than humans in these cold climates. It's ridiculous. And I'm getting, <laughs> and I'm getting tired of it. You know, so I, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's, <laughs> we gotta, uh, but part of what the long-term goal and things you know that that me and brother Eric collaborating and working on other members of the community is to put something together where we will be able to properly relocate and do so in a way that's going to benefit humanity help help a lot of people because you know both of us we we know that we could go off and uh you know Buy, you know by ourselves or do different things or whatever but there's a there's a mission at hand uh, and this mission to take ourselves physiologically as, as far as we can go but also give back and try to create some some kind of le you know leading torch you know the air torch the some kind of guiding light so that we can start to put humanity back together they say make make you <laughs> make human make humanity human again i mean that's because this stuff is ridiculous out here man uh, <clears throat> school shooting i mean it happens all the time these massive shootings are all, all constant and as soon as you start talking about it everybody gets stuck in these political uh the divisiveness you know the this left wing right wing and um they're they're uh they're gonna say all right we gotta gun gun control you can take away the guns and control the bullets and then on the other side is like you trying to take my guns you gonna take my gun i'm a, no oh they're gonna try to take i got a stockpile and you ain't taking them come pried out my cold dead hand none of that's gonna work it's all ignorant because until we can every time something like this happens and everybody immediately asks what were they eating not what were they thinking not we let's take all their guns away or let's make we need better mental treatment it was one bad apple what were they eating 
period. That will tell you everything you need to know about that type of behavior. And until we can get to that, there's this we can't talk about nothing else. Everything else is futile. The whole discussion, gun control versus psychological help, doesn't matter. As long as pus and mucus forming foods is totally acceptable across the country, across societies around the globe, whatever. You know, it's it's just the the tragedy, as Eric says, the tragedy of nutrition is gonna continue to play out and play out and play out. It's, it is what it is. And so until we can get serious about addressing physiological needs, dynamics, cleansing, because I've often said, give me the resources to create a rehabilitation facility that you would send offenders of society's laws to. They call them prisons now here. We'll, re, we'll reinstate the term rehabilitation center. And we'll do the research to figure out how long it takes to fundamentally transform someone's physiology and in turn their mentality. So various things, people get sentences. You know, they say, okay, you, you've done such and such. You have to go be in these horrible, the so-called rehabilitation. There's nothing rehabilitative about these places, but that's where you're going for five years, for 10 years, for 15 years. Come into my system where we send you to our rehabilitation center and you're doing lemon juice, colonics, or they're being administered if you won't do them every day for however many years it takes. We'll figure that out. We'll figure out the number. Five, you know, if you would go, even if we use the same numbers that they use, which are not standardized, they're just made up. And you say, okay, you did this five years for this. You know, okay, well, five years, what we said at hard lemons, you know, five years just. You know, transition you. We teach you how to garden. There's a gardening. Uh, everything that you consume, you're going to grow. Most everything. Uh, you know, that, that a whole different type of situation. You know, you're going to come out of that. I mean, I guarantee it. See, they don't believe that you can transform like that. I mean, th they... They run away from that type of evidence. I mean, there's just on a basic level, the... Uh, the young people's prisons called schools that we, we call schools, uh, but they're set up. Most schools are designed. The layout is actually designed. This is the same people that design schools, design prisons. It is set up in in a in that type of you know penitentiary type of type of way. But in schools, if kids learned you know all these these things. How to how to garden and how to all, all this kind of stuff. It's just f f fundamental fundamental change in, in society. But what well, my point with that was that they've changed the diet, you know, the lunches in some places. I've just read a number of articles over the years. Is I don't know which cities, but there were certain big public schools. It might have been Chicago, but they they got rid of meat off of the lunch menu. And all of, uh, it, 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 a lot of the teachers realize, like, man, what the kids aren't acting up as much. They're not running around as crazy. Of course, they're going to eat whatever they eat before and after school. But when they're there, they're, they weren't serving meat anymore. And, and there was a noticeable change in behavior. Now, you would think that would be front page news all around. Like, they had discovered something. They discovered that, wow, like people's behavior changes based on what they eat uh -huh. I mean that's, that's that's a big deal you, you the behavior changes 
based on what you eat. Where, where, where are these long discussions about that? I mean, that's, that's, that's heavy. That's, that's something that needs serious research, serious attention, and not only research, but immediate imp, uh, 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 implementation. Why not? You can research why you, they do it all the time. You research why they implement here this, uh, this drug, I don't know, it might kill you. We don't know, but we're, we're, we'll start giving it out. And we'll, we'll test it while we're giving it out. If it ends up killing too many people, we'll, we'll take it off the market. Okay, well, if you can test deadly drugs in that manner and start implementing it right now while you're sort of using people as guinea pigs, then, I don't know. Let's implement it, <laughs> but eh, I know, I know we're too much rational thought, too much dealing with the, uh, the, the real issues and the addiction. You know, we, we can't have that in our society. We, we got to be dealing with uh, just, just pus and mucus, man. I mean, just I know before I left. That the uh, uh, saw the, all the footage of the the uh, the school shooting, the most recent school shooting. Who knows? There might might have been another one. There might have been one today. I mean, they they happened so so rapidly. And I was thinking about. I think I probably grew up in schools. And when I was going to school, it was maybe the. <laughs> I mean, the closest thing to a peacetime period, I guess, because it was after the Cold War. So we didn't, you know, wasn't like with my, you know, my aunt and parents that was getting, uh, when they were going to school, they had to do the nuclear bomb <laughs> alarm type of get under your desk. Like, that's going to, that's going to help. That's why these children are practicing to duck and cover just as you do in your school. <laughs> if there's a nuclear bomb, get under your desk, okay. Uh, and then the Columbine happened at, when I was in high school. And after that, you know, I don't know when they started really implementing test, you know, where, you know, when I heard about that, I was like, man. In schools across America, the job description for teachers has changed. This is only a drill. This is only a drill. He is holding a fake gun. Today, thousands of teachers are now required to participate in active shooter drills like this one. To think about that that's, that's something that's on kids' minds that they have to address. Is I never thought about nothing like that. I never thought like, okay, some some crazy person is gonna break into the school and start shooting everybody. Not until Columbine. Once Columbine hit, then it was like that that was on people's minds and you know, I started you know, you, you just start thinking it changes you. It changes how you think. Now you you're walking into into school in the you know in a more kind of you know with some military type of you know trying to trying to you know where, where's all the exits at where's all the you know I mean, going through scenarios in your head of how you would defeat a gunman and all kinds of stuff you know it's it, it, man it was nice to not have to deal with that you know as much as I got my problems with the school situation and that's a whole other issue just problems with with the way it's set up it, it's it is at what it is now so we deal with what we have and there's different options and things you can do and, and that kind of thing and of course uh homeschooling if you are are ready for that and down for that um there's the uh, the steiner schools i got some friends that have folks that have their kids going down that road but i don't know it was it was nice to not have to do you know, mass, you know, shooter drills, uh, 
we did fire drills. That was it. <laughs> it was the only thing we were worried about. And we knew there would never be any fires. We just, we, we enjoyed just going outside for a couple minutes when we, the fire alarm had hit and we'd be like, yeah, all right. We'd get up and line up and walk out. And, uh, and I was, you know, I went to schools that were, that were ra- at least nice and kind of rational, you know, so I'm glad that that too, I, I wasn't in a place where there was yeah, no education going on and uh, you trying to deal with just constant stuff, you know, just like, uh, you know, just, just getting to school is like a, like a, you know, going through a war zone, you know, I, I didn't have that experience. So I'm, I'm glad about that. But, man, I just wish people would get that. Just wake up and understand that we have to make some serious changes. And they really have to start with changing what we put in our bodies, what we eat. But we have to first identify the real problem. And the real problem, whether you're talking about mass shootings or various wars that are going on, problems with the systemic problems, you know, inner cities, so-called stuff. I mean, there's a lot of historical things that we can get into. The way that things are designed were designed that way for a purpose. So there is, don't, don't believe them when they say, well, that's, you know, poor, you know, poor people deserve where they're at or impoverished sections or stuff. It's like, now you got to, you know, research redlining, get into, I mean, there's a whole history of understanding that the way things are now, we're set up to be that way. It's, it's, ex- everything is going according to plan. It's exactly the people that designed it. it it's exactly how they envisioned it. They didn't envision some utopia where every everybody had everything that 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 they wanted, and as well as li- personal liberty, and that's not what they had in mind. You know, they had in mind exactly what we got. So, uh, where there is a large number of people that are, you know, that, that live lives of all you can eat. So every everything that they could eat, they have access to all the food they could ever want. They have enough money to get that food. They have enough money to entertain themselves with the entertainments that are provided in society. And so they're not gonna. You're not gonna see them complaining about anything. You're not gonna see them at a at a rally fighting. Not all of them, you know, fighting for the rights and liberties of other people. That's not why, you know, it's they they're they're fat and happy and having fun. And then the underbelly, the people that's going through a lot of stuff, they don't. It's like, you know, they don't have the time and the resources to really, you know, galvanize, make make the change. You know, when you look at the big changes historically, we look like the 60s and in the early 70s, there was a convergence of these various movements that were able to come together for the common, uh, with sort of this common purpose. Uh, but a lot of people forget about that when they're studying and, and they look back and say, okay, I want to, there's a lot of people like, okay, I want to start a revolution. Okay, let me study what happened, the history of these revolutions. And when things were really successful that created permanent change, at least here in the United States, there was this coming together where you had civil rights that sort of was turning into the black power movement that was coming together with Native American movement, anti-war and Vietnam movement. There was just this convergence because there were was kind of all these different things that were on their own but then once they started to come together that's when it was like okay there's there's gonna be some change uh and it still took a long time and but once 
the ch but when I look at the 80s, what ended up changing was there was they, it was like the government figured out how to anesthetize folks. It's like okay, let's 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 not have this type of uprising again because we don't want to get anywhere close to any kind of being overthrown. So let's let let's just create the situation where people can just like I said uh, I don't know it's just it's interesting when I look back at videos of people that were really you know hardcore revolutionary like burn burn it down all that kind of stuff in the late 60s and the 70s then in the 80s they're they're like domesticated and, it, and I'm thinking there's a Eyes on the Prize documentary. If you check that, that's I watched that years ago. But that's that's a really good documentary that goes from the beginning of the civil rights movement, sort of through the Black Power movement, and they they got interviews with some of the people that were the most uh, you know high, high leadership in Black Panther Party back then, and um, and they're you know it's it's just interesting you know it doesn't take nothing away from what they did but it was interesting how you got to the 80s now they they're kind of the the edge that they, they can talk about what they were doing but they're sort of in a you know make a total different environment it's like they're now they're in a middle class house and they got like cosby sweaters on and you know that kind of thing and uh if you don't know <laughs> google cosby sweater if you don't know what that is but um so my thing is how do we how do you have that not happen you know not don't don't go for the dangling of the carrot as uh, as brother air would say but anyway I just had a had a few things to get off my mind. I'm gonna make make a few more videos, kind of document this. Uh, I think I'm gonna go jump on my mini trampoline for a minute. But you know, in closing, s stick to the transition. Really continue to read the Mucus's Diet book. Uh, you know the e course is available. Be on the lookout. I'm gonna be doing a an e-course sale here very soon uh but definitely if you're seeing this video later definitely highly recommend getting the e-course there's i put a lot of years into making it and it's it's very comprehensive it covers so much you know just so much more than because that's the focus you know um, it's not just me when i'm having these type of videos where i just Ram, you know, rambling on, talking about various topics and going from here to here. No, we're very, it's, it's basically a college course. The only difference with that, the e-course and the college course, if I were to teach it, would if you were in a classroom setting, we would d discuss some of the stuff and I could, you know, field some questions and there would be more discussions and we would there'd be a, a research paper, a couple papers, some writing assignments, that kind of thing. It should be a, and some more evaluations, a couple of exams or something like that. But other than that, it's, it's definitely a college level educational resource. So please check that out. But hey, I wanna thank you for tuning in. It's been a minute, you know, and uh, continue to transition, transition, transition. That's that's the message that I have to continue to put out there because people still aren't catching on, and it's still people still are, re, you know, they they they're trying real hard to not have to transition, and any excuse they can make to avoid that process. When if you embrace it. And you start to just live a lifestyle of transition, you could be surprised at at that point how fa when you're not trying to go fast, how all of a sudden you can be, go light years faster than you even could have imagined. But you can't want there that you can't want that you can't want to go fast like you can't. It's it's a uh, 
and it's not a, I don't I don't know how else other than to just continue to study the material and to deep deeply think about these issues in a space of solitude where you can really understand that and get to that point because it is I mean you'd see what what I'm talking about I mean we just had uh, a good friend of ours that just did a really long fast and been pre- transitioning gradually and slowly over time, not rushing, and boom, all of a sudden, you know, 40-day fast out of nowhere. No one told this person to do that. It wasn't a recommendation or encouraged. It's just it that that's where, what it was. <clears throat> and so transition, transition, transition. Now, thank you for plugging in. Please share this video if you're still this far into it. Uh, YouTube is rough out here. They changing the algorithms all the time. They're changing stuff to where basically they don't, they restrict the amount of sharing of the, the us, they say the little people, uh, the, the folks that don't have a millions and millions of <coughs> followers and stuff. They uh, really drastically re- uh, restrict our videos, and so we uh, we need your help to you know get get this out there because you, YouTube's not gonna do it. <laughs> They're not gonna help. So all right. So I uh, thank you so much. Until next time, peace, love, and breath.